my name is Anna Maria, and I'm going to be interviewing Melissa Alelis from the Bridge Music faculty. So how old were you when you started to play the flute, and why did you start playing the flute? Okay, that's a really great question. So I started playing when I was seven, but there's actually a funny story behind as to why I chose the flute um, as my instrument of choice. So at the time, my brother was in fourth grade. And so that was the age where students are able to pick an instrument of their choice to learn at school. So then one day he came home with a clarinet and then he showed it to me and I thought, hey, that's a pretty cool instrument. And, you know, as the younger sister, everything that he wanted to do, I wanted to do. So then I told him, I said, hey, I want to play the clarinet, too, just like you. And then his response was, no. I'm playing the clarinet. Why don't you choose another instrument? Maybe in the woodwind family. And I thought, okay, maybe. So then he showed me a chart of like all the instruments in the woodwind family to see which one that I could choose by the time I was in fourth grade. Um, so then that's when he showed me the flute. And I thought, okay, maybe we'll see. But then it wasn't until when I first saw my brother's uh, band concert and then that's when I saw the flute for the first time in person. And I thought, okay, that's a really cool instrument. It's shiny and I loved how it sounds. So then after the concert, I went up to my folks and I said, hey, I want to play the flute. And so the rest is history. So there's like a bit of an inside joke with our family that if it weren't for my brother, I wouldn't be able to find this passion of um, music or the flute. That's so cool. Um, yeah, that's very interesting. I've always wanted to play the clarinet or the trombone too. And then I ended up playing the cello. So like, what are your favorite things about the cello or like about performing in general? So, um, I mean, I just love like how you can't be always like perfect. You have to keep um, working on something new to get better at it. And then you feel really like accomplished when you're ready to perform and you could do that with the bridge music performance class because each time you like perform even though it's not really a performance it's just like a sharing of what you've been working on each time you get better and then by the end of the semester you could see how much you've improved and I think that's really cool because then you feel like you're ready to perform um, once you've been working on it for a long time. I love that. I absolutely love that. You know, it's always like such small victories. And then by the time you, it's like on the day of the performance and that's when you start to see that huge improvement and you thought, and you would think, wow, I, I did that. This is amazing. And, you know, and I just think that's what makes music fun because it's like every time you achieve something, it's just like this sense of accomplishment. Yeah. So um, what, What's your, what's been your favorite experience with bridge music so far? Like what's your favorite part of it? Oh, that's a, that's a really great question. Um, only because that there's just so many things that I absolutely love about bridge music. So it's a little bit tricky to pick one, but I would have to say that Christoph and Tanya created this sense of community with bridge music, with their students and with um, other faculty members. And um, it's amazing to see how inspired they all are just by being surrounded by one another, learning from each other. And you can just see how much, um, how much they enjoy making music with, with one another. So it never gets old for me. And I'm just so grateful to be a part of that, um, of that community as well. And uh, especially like during these tough times, I'm just so glad that, you know, that is still possible, you know, through the wonderful world of Zoom. So, um, so what's been your favorite experience with Bridge Music so far? Um, well, I love a lot of, like I've loved all of them, but um, I think one in particular was the 2019 um, holiday concert. I think it was oh, really yeah. fun. And then um, because I was in the course that time, I got to see things from a little different perspective. And also the party was like really fun. <laughs> oh, I bet. You know, I do remember that that concert as well. Such a great venue and everybody sounded wonderful and you sounded wonderful. And uh, that was that was a very memorable um, uh, concert experience for sure. That's that's a really great one. Absolutely. So Anna Maria, so besides music, do you have like any other hobbies 
outside of music? Yeah, so um, ever since like maybe one or two years ago, I've been super into, and you know this, but flexibility. Yeah. So I I took some pictures of me um, a few years ago and this quarantine, I've been like recreating the pictures um, and it's cool to see like the difference because I've like worked hard on stretching and everything. And I also really like just dance in general. <laughs> Uh, and working out also with my cousin on Zoom. I think it's super fun. Absolutely. And, you know, I think stretching is also very important, especially for us musicians. So then we won't get as tight, like when we're like performing, like with the cello or with the flute, because we just have to make sure that like our body feels relaxed whenever, you know, we're performing or practicing to prevent any injuries or, you know, to promote uh, more music making in the best way possible. Yes, of course. Yeah. And so just out of curiosity, so like, what's, what's your favorite type of dance? Um, well, I love every kind, but I mean, ballet, I love, and then also like anything from ballet to hip hop, I love it all. And I recently like started to become a bit more serious with it, which I think is really cool. The last question is, uh, like, how did you get into fitness and jump roping and all that? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes um yeah jump rope has been quite fun throughout the past several months um so actually a friend of mine got me into jump rope uh last year actually um so you know because he's into fitness he used to post all of these videos on his social media and some of them include him uh jumping rope inside a gym and he was doing all of these insane tricks. And I thought, okay, not only that looks extremely challenging, but that looks extremely fun at the same time. So because of the pandemic, I thought that I would like to invest more time in my physical health or slash fitness. So then that's when I finally um, invested in a jump rope. And ever since I started to jump rope, I've never had so much fun working out in such a long time. And honestly, it's so much better than going on a four mile run. I can tell you that it's, it's just so much fun. And so, you know, every now and then I like to record myself making, um, you know, these jump rope videos. So then I can send it to my, to my friends just to show how much, you know, progress I've been making these past several months. And it's just amazing to see how much improvement one can achieve just within a few months. And because a friend of mine got me into um, jump rope, I hope to do the same for others by posting videos of myself um, jumping rope on my social media. Yes. So thank you so much, Melissa. This is so awesome getting to hear more. Of course. And thank you so much for your wonderful questions. And it was such a pleasure seeing you. Thank you.